Before we get into our topic on how cryptocurrencies work, we need to talk about the importance of keeping the cryptocurrencies that you have in your Exodus crypto wallet safe. And the best way to do that is by using a VPN. Your ISP and possibly other not so good actors can monitor and record your internet traffic. This means they know exactly what websites you visit. They can see that you have been buying cryptocurrencies and that you have cryptocurrency wallets installed on your device. With a VPN, your internet traffic is encrypted and scrambled so that nobody can spy on anything you're doing. Another good reason to have a VPN is to get around geographical blocks. Some websites and cryptocurrency exchanges like Binance, Bybit, and many others will not allow you to use their services to trade cryptocurrencies if you are on these sites using a US IP address, and a VPN can easily solve this issue. There are many other fantastic uses for a VPN that you've probably never heard of, but this video is about cryptocurrency and how cryptocurrencies work, so let's get started. What are cryptocurrencies? To answer that question, we have to first understand how money works and where it originates. Currently, most of us in the United States and many other countries use the US dollar to make our day-to-day -day purchases. These purchases are most often done electronically using a debit or credit card. However, the idea of the US dollar is still the same, be it an in-person paper transaction or an online credit card transaction. Let's start with the Federal Reserve. Many people think that because the word federal is in the name that the Federal Reserve is part of the U.S. government. The Federal Reserve is not part of the U.S. government. It is a privately owned entity that lends currency in the form of U.S. dollars to the U.S. government with interest attached. The Federal Reserve is in control of the money supply, and let's just say they don't always have your best interest at heart. Speaking of interest, the interest that is charged on the currency that is lent to the U.S. government is the main reason why we U.S. citizens have to pay federal taxes. Now, not all of the tax revenue that you pay to the IRS goes towards social programs and infrastructure. A very sizable portion of the federal taxes that come out of your paycheck each week goes towards paying interest, also known as the national debt, to this privately owned entity known as the Federal Reserve. So what we essentially have here is a central authority that is in control of our money supply. Now, let that sink in for a minute. Moving on. So let's talk about cryptocurrencies. Most notably Bitcoin, but most cryptocurrencies operate similarly. Cryptocurrencies in their simplest form is nothing more than a digital ledger that all participants have a copy of. Now let's say Hakeem, me, requests a transaction to send 0.5 Bitcoin to a Bitcoin wallet address that I have designated for long-term storage. And a wallet address can be thought of as an account number. The wallet that I am sending the BTC from is linked to two unique keys, and this holds true for most cryptocurrency wallets. There is a private key and a public key. The private key is what gives you and anyone with access to your private key access to the available cryptocurrency on that particular wallet. A private key, when it pertains to BTC, is typically 64 characters containing both numbers and letters. Always keep your private keys stored someplace safe. The public key is very similar to a private key, except that it is meant to verify that you signed slash authorized a transaction with your private keys. This eliminates the security risk involved with sharing your private keys to verify that a transaction has been authorized by the sender. Keep your private keys stored someplace safe. I can't stress that enough. Now this transaction of 0.5 BTC is broadcasted to a peer-to-peer -peer network consisting of computers known as nodes or miners. Now don't let the term node confuse you, a node is nothing more than a computer running special cryptocurrency transaction validation software that a huge number of network participants run all across the world. And yes, anyone can run a node and take part in securing a cryptocurrency network. Next, the network of nodes validates the transaction and the user's balance also known as UTXOs, or unspent transactions. Now the sender's transaction validation being done by this huge network of nodes will all have the nodes competing against each other to get their new block added to the network. There is a reward for winning the competition to add your block of data which contains the new transaction to set cryptocurrencies blockchain. The reward is typically in the form of the same type of cryptocurrency. The competition takes place using the node's processing power to solve a mathematical equation for SHA-256 or SHA-256. If we were to use BTC as an example, SHA-256 stands for Secure Hash Algorithm 256-bit, and it is a form of encryption, hence the name cryptocurrency. This process is what is known as cryptocurrency mining. Once the new block containing your transaction has been added to the blockchain, typically the recipient or wallet will not release the sent cryptocurrency until a set number of confirmations have been achieved. Confirmations are blocks of data that have been added to the blockchain after the block that includes your transaction. 
The amount of confirmations can vary depending on the cryptocurrency that is being sent. Typically, when it comes to BTC, a wallet won't make available to BTC until six confirmations have been achieved. Now, some things that I may not have mentioned. All cryptocurrency transactions, unless it is a privacy coin, are stored permanently and publicly on the blockchain. These transactions are not attached to a name or any personal information, but are attached to a wallet address, which is a set of characters that consists of numbers and letters, and represent what you can think of as an account number. There is no risk to having your wallet address displayed publicly because it is only for receiving. You can find transaction information with either the transaction ID or the wallet address using what is called the Blockchain Explorer for the cryptocurrency in question and there are no fees or anything like that associated with using a Blockchain Explorer. The transaction ID will be available within the transactions listing inside the cryptocurrency wallet that you are using. Quite often, and this is the case for most wallets, you can simply click the transaction ID and be taken to a page that gives you all the details about the transaction. Now, I have mentioned crypto wallets quite often in this video so far, so I'm guessing you might be wondering where you can get a crypto wallet or what's a good crypto wallet to use. In my opinion, Exodus Wallet is one of the best and easiest crypto wallets to use. Now, there will be a link down below in the description, so be sure to use that link for Exodus Wallet. However, there are many different and worthwhile free crypto wallets that you can use, as well as some excellent hardware wallets that you have to pay for, but many consider hardware crypto wallets like Ledger and Trezor to be the gold standard of crypto storage. Alright, so just in case it has not become pretty clear after my explanation of what cryptocurrencies are, allow me to point out some of the amazing benefits of transacting with cryptocurrencies. Number 1. There is no centralized authority that you have to ask permission from to send or receive currency. Let's say you want to buy some clothing for resale in your business and the vendor happens to be in Australia. Well, typically you would need permission from either your bank to wire the money, a credit card company, or some type of remittance service. Now, you can also be certain that this transaction will involve some hefty fees, delays, ID verifications, and possibly a DNA sample will be required. With cryptocurrency, there is no asking for permission because it is decentralized. The fees are very low and we're talking about pennies for huge transfers of value. Now there will be no ID verification needed. It's simple. You ask for the vendor's wallet address, you send the crypto to the wallet address from the crypto wallet and a few minutes later or a few seconds later the transaction is complete. This also works for sending cryptos to anyone at any time from any place in the world. All you need is an internet connection. Okay, so maybe you're worried about the price fluctuations of cryptocurrencies and you need some stability like sending a US dollar, also known as a Federal Reserve note. It literally says Federal Reserve notes on the money. You can choose to do a transaction using what is called stable coins. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies that are $1 in price and stay at $1 in price, with maybe some very, very small fluctuations that will be in the less than a penny range. Examples of a stable coin would be TUSD, also known as True USD. USDT, also known as USD Tether, DAI, DAI, also known as MakerDAI, USDC, and many others. There's no shortage of stablecoin options to transact in. I personally can't understand why people are still using PayPal and other such services when using a stablecoin is much more reliable, the fees are lower, and it works anywhere, anytime, in any amount, no ID verification is needed, no arbitrary account freezes or delays. I mean, cryptos are fantastic. You can even use the Gemini app to get started right now. The link for that is in the description. Use the link and you can get $10 worth of Bitcoin for free. Number two, your funds in your cryptocurrency wallet can never be seized like they can be with a bank account. As long as you have access to your private keys, you and you alone have access to your funds. Bitcoin is quite often referred to as a digital gold. Your gold can't be seized in the middle of the night without somebody physically coming to your house and taking it from you and nobody knows you have or own gold, right? Number three, nobody has to know you own crypto. You can have several million dollars worth of crypto, be it in the form of a stable coin or any other type of cryptocurrency. Yes, the easiest way to get your hands on cryptocurrency is to buy from an exchange or a platform like Gemini. And a link will be down below in the description for you to sign up for Gemini and get $10 worth of BTC for free. However, you can also purchase cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, or whatever cryptocurrency you want by transacting peer to peer. Simply do a search on Craigslist or your favorite classified website and meet someone locally to purchase some cryptocurrency with cash and send said cryptocurrency into your crypto wallet that does not require any ID verification to use. 
Many real cryptocurrency wallets can be simply downloaded as an app to your PC or smartphone or whatever. You can also purchase a hardware wallet such as a ledger or Trezor to remain off the radar of those that might be trying to understand how much value you have stored away. Number four, once you understand the basics of how cryptocurrencies work and realize that they are pretty easy to transact with, you will likely be wanting to partake in some trading and make some serious profits in doing so. Profits that you will never realize by trading stocks unless you're doing some insane leverage trading. I should also mention that leverage trading is available with cryptocurrencies as well. So yeah, there is that golden nugget. Number five. Every time another person decides to start transacting in cryptocurrency, less and less power is given to central authorities that like to make us work for them for free via taxation, which can critically be thought of as a form of slavery, but one would have to be critically thinking to see it that way. I love cryptocurrency. All right, so that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Let me know if I explain how cryptocurrencies work good enough for most people to understand and what I could do to make this video better. As always, thanks for watching, and I'm out, man. Peace.